Now, the illegal boat arrivals are the least of our concerns when it comes to Labor's immigration policies. Do you remember late last year when we were all so perplexed that so soon after the October 7 terror attacks, Penny Wong started handing out visas to Palestinians to come to Australia from Gaza? At the time, the ABC reported that 860 Palestinians would be granted visas. And on this program, we questioned how security checks could be done so quickly when ASIO has previously said these can take months. Well, the Albanese government has quietly nearly tripled the number of Palestinians they're bringing into Australia. From October 7th, and those are the terror attacks, remember, from October 7th until the 6th of February this year, 2,273 people who hold a Palestinian Authority travel document, so 2,273 Palestinians, have been given visas to Australia. And let me tell you, the security process is worse than any of us could have imagined. We've spoken about how security checks are essential because we need to make sure that the Australian government isn't flying into Sydney and Melbourne and our other major cities, people who have links to Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad or any other terror group. Well, Foreign Minister Penny Wong assured us repeatedly in multiple television interviews that rigorous security checks were being done. Well, her comments were incorrect. Because officials have revealed in Senate estimates that far from rigorous security checks, which, as ASIO has said, can take months, these visas were being approved in a single day, one day. Have a look. Between 7th of October and 31st of December 2023, the department granted 2,127 visitor visas to people declaring Palestinian citizenship and an additional 148 migration and temporary visas were granted. What's the average processing time for a visa like this? Uh, globally, for a visitor visa, the median processing time is one day. One day. And that was, by the way, Shadow Home Affairs Minister James Patterson doing that questioning. He did a sensational job. But if that's not disturbing enough, one day, some visas for Palestinians were apparently granted in an hour. Have a look again. But there was also a media report by the ABC on the 9th of December um, entitled Australians Turn to WhatsApp Group to help, for Help to Get Family Members Out of Gaza, in which some individuals claim their visitor visa for relatives were approved within one hour. It is possible. Sure, but how could you possibly do all the necessary security and other checks in just an hour from an applicant? I mean, that's lightning speed approval. When we apply that um that vast range of information to, to consideration of visitor visas. So if you look globally, um, a, a very large number of our visitor visas would be done um, inside an hour. Uh, the, the assessment is essentially um, looking at all the information we hold yeah. and applying that in a number of ways to, sure, to the application in front of us. I think we can confidently say that the appropriate security checks are not being done. They can't possibly be done if they're only taking an hour. Now, remember, Penny Wong went on every television show. Sunrise, Today Show, she held a press conference. She confidently reassured the public that rigorous checks were being done. Well, we asked her office if she was misleading the Australian public when she made these comments. Here's what her office told us just this afternoon. This is best directed to the Department of Home Affairs. What a joke. What a joke. This is our foreign minister. The idea that all Palestinians are innocent is obviously naive. Of course, there are many innocent Palestinian citizens who are unwitting victims of Hamas, families who hate the terror group and who would be desperate to escape. But there are also many Palestinians who do agree with Hamas, who have been indoctrinated to hate Jews and Westerners, and many citizens took part in the Hamas invasion of Israel on October 7, and many Palestinians celebrated those terror attacks. There were Palestinian citizens looting Israeli homes and even taking hostages. Now, we have no idea whether some of the Palestinians that our government has granted precious visas to are actually Hamas terrorists themselves, desperate to flee because of the pressure from the IDF, because Israel is winning. 
Australian Jewish Association's David Adler points out that some surveys have shown there's up to 75% support for Hamas among Palestinians. And he says it's inconceivable that appropriate security screening has been undertaken. He told me today that the Labor government is exhibiting a reckless disregard for the safety and security of Australian citizens. It is almost certain Australia is importing Hamas supporters and those who celebrated the 7th of October terrorism. He says it's impossible, it is possible, that we are bringing in Hamas members and operatives. We may even be bringing in some who participated in or assisted the 7 October terrorism. Now, we know that Jews are already being persecuted in Australia. Anti-Semitism is rising. There's doxing, death threats, vandalism, hatred and intimidation. Aggressive protests outside of Jewish synagogues, homes and businesses. The last thing we need is Hamas sympathisers to be flown into Australia, undoubtedly at taxpayer expense, to further put at risk the safety of all Australians and to further erode social cohesion. Life in Gaza is nothing like life in Australia. Here, we need to protect our safety, our security, our peace, our way of life. It's precious. And as we've sadly learnt in recent months, it's fragile. We can't risk it by possibly bringing in terrorism, violence and hatred. You'd think if you were granting visas to 2,273 people from a war zone like Gaza, you'd take extra care to ensure that terrorist sympathisers or even Hamas operatives weren't being brought into our peaceful cities. But the reality is that Penny Wong and DFAT could be providing safe passage to Australia for terrorists or terrorist sympathisers. It's unacceptable that visas are being approved within one day and potentially one hour. This inadequate security screening isn't just a threat to Jews, it's a threat to all Australians.